Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com weekend wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, having a wonderful weekend. Uh, we are roughly about three weeks, right? A little less than three weeks from uh, Christmas than going uh, into uh, 2020. So hopefully you guys are having a wonderful start uh, to your holiday season. Uh, hopefully you guys are blessed and happy and again, like I, you know, I actually tweeted this out this morning. You know, it, people are always talking about, you know, buying this and buying that, you know, the monetary things that, uh, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people um, always, uh, you know, put in the sense of happiness with with buying, right? And the most amazing part about it is most people just just don't know how to smile, just don't know how to laugh. You know, everything is so serious in their lives, and you know. Be <laughs> Before you can, you know, before you can become this great trader, which again, which I think is, is a little bit of a myth, but before you can become this great trader, you got to become a, a great person, man. You got to learn how to lighten up. Not everything in life is so damn serious. And I, I, uh, unfortunately, so many people go uh, through life with all these pusses on their faces that, my God, everything is the end of the world. They just really don't enjoy anything. So, uh, again, just smile. What's so hard about that? Smile, laugh. Doesn't cost you any money. Doesn't make a difference how rich... Uh, or poor you are. It's so easy just to kind of put a smile on your face. You'll be su very pleasantly surprised uh, how life becomes a little bit uh, sweeter. So hopefully you guys are having a great start to your uh, weekend. So let's talk about the market. I, I, I thought this week was pretty important. Um, I, I thought this week could have had a lot of damage uh, and really soured kind of the end of the year potential rally. And what we saw in the beginning of the week uh, was that really aggressive pull. You guys remember that? The first five minutes of the day, uh, if you've been kind of watching these videos uh, for just in the last week, you kind of saw the thought process behind it. So we've been talking about this linear move for a long, long time. And obviously at any point they could pull a linear move just because gravity. They don't need any, um, they don't need any, you know, materialistic news. Again, they blame that manufacturing number on Monday for that really aggressive move to the downside. Okay, that's fine. But again, linear. It's called gravity. Things are going to happen. They just need a little bit of a little bit of a lighter fluid. It's going to set it off. And what what I like what the bulls did. Okay, if you look at the final scoreboard for the week, you saw uh, the S and P and the Nasdaq pretty flat, right? Pretty flat. And because of that, because of these exaggerated moves in the beginning of the week, that again, a lot of traders did get caught because again, when you have your blinders on. And you're trading the market in anticipation of a year and, and run with no ramifications, you got caught, right? A lot of people got caught. And that's why I always say you don't want to be swinging stocks up here. You want to be swinging stocks coming out of a channel, either to the bottom or the middle. And unfortunately, when people are piling on positions and anticipating the market's going to be up here while the market's still here, there's a problem. And again, we use the word breakout, I think, as a society, as a trader society. A little too much. It's like, you know, it, 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 people use the word breakout very loosely. Like, again, the NASDAQ broke out right here, right? The NASDAQ 100 broke out right here, didn't break out here, didn't break out here, didn't break out here. So, again, when you get an aggressive pull, that's the ramifications of being way far off of the natural breakout. The market didn't fail up here, okay? The market broke out right here. So, all you're doing is you're not buying a breakout, you're buying momentum with that breakout way, way back. So nobody should really uh, be surprised when stock prices start imploding when you're you know, 10%, 5%, 8% away from the breakout price. It's just common sense. The further you are away, the more aggressive pull there's a possibility. So it was very, very important that the bulls recover. I mean, really, really recovered. They did a great job uh, off the bottom of the range here. And this kind of really saved the sentiment because if the following day we never bounced, you know, we were going to go lower. We were talking about that 195 level. Any close uh, below that 200 mark that we've been talking about under video, video after video after week, week after week after week, it, it would have it, it would have really turned into uh, another back test into the rising support uh, into the 50-day moving average. So you have to give the bulls, the, you know, a really a lot of credit. Um, 
they did a great job defending prices. The problem was when you get such an aggressive pull, okay, you're going to damage a lot of charts. And we kind of knew that years ago, you know, 15, 20 years ago, when I first started trading, every day is the same day for me. Okay. It doesn't make it right. When you, when you first start trading, you don't even know what the hell you're looking at, right? Well, good market, bad market, bear market, bull market, distribution market. We, we don't know what's going on, right? We don't know. It's everything's the same thing. Well, the market's open, right? Market's open. That must mean there's opportunity. As you get older and older, more mature in the game, you realize that there's, there's intervals, right? There's different intervals. There's aggressive intervals, there's passive intervals, and there's something known as distribution. And distribution happens when the bulls and bears are literally fighting control of sentiment. And that's what we saw in the middle of the week. And it really took down a lot of charts. I mean, really, really ugly charts. And because we bounced back that first day, it really led every single chart basically right in the middle of its channel. And here's the more, more impressive part of the week that I, I, I think we, we handled in the live webinar. We knew this was happening. Okay. We, we knew this was happening. Uh, this wasn't a shock for us. So I, I knew you, you're not going to have five, six, seven aggressive pivots throughout the day. I knew this. We, we were we were basically led to identify two to four pivots a day. Okay. And I think we did a great job uh, within those channels to do so because again, that that's experience, right? Maybe, maybe eight, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have clearly saw exactly what was in front of us. And I think we we, we did a really, really good job uh, identifying the pivots both long and the short side. Um, and it actually turned out to be a pretty, pretty, pretty good week considering how damaged a lot of these channels were. And again, it wasn't one of that one of those weeks, for the exception of for the exception of Thursday, that there was an expanded range to the downside. Uh, I think it was Thursday that caught uh, that short on Netflix and went down like three and change. Um, I, I think the rest of the moves, if you look at the rest of the moves on beta, for the exception of Roku, had some pretty aggressive moves uh, throughout the week, both long and short, you'll notice the majority of the names were trading in pretty aggressive channels. And it really took, for example, like a stock like Tesla uh, for Friday to kind of wake up, and then yet it still failed. Um, but you, you have to like, if you're, if you're a trader of momentum names and you're a trader of uh, especially beta, you really have to really be encouraged how some of the names that look like they were roadkill for most of the weeks, they finally started to wake up. Again, not yet in the sweet spots, but they started to wake up. If you look at some names, uh, for example, like, like Tesla, you could clearly see, right? You could clearly see where the channel lives. Again, you don't need a lot of indicators to see where the stock needs to break out of. Uh, Amazon is, is weak the whole week. Well, it's still weak going into this week. Uh, but again, a problem, yes, and it looked like it broke down. It looks like it was about the breaking down. It has a very, very definitive look to going into this week. But you have to be at least a little encouraged from Friday that it didn't take out the lows of the day, right? It didn't take out the previous lows and at least held. Does that translate into Amazon going higher? Not so fast, but at least you are encouraged. Uh, Netflix, for example, again, you know, here was the breakdown on Thursday. Really nice trade. Beautiful trade off that 303. We talked about that. Went all the way down to 98 and change. But again, it reclaimed. Again, kudos to the bulls. Again, not out of the woods yet. Still needs to reclaim this. Still needs to reclaim that. But you like where it's going. Even the video uh, that I traded for you know, pretty quick cash flow on Friday is very, very close to breaking out. If you look at the daily chart, it doesn't appear that it's great, that it looks it got rejected off the 10-day moving average. But you like what it did here over three days. And in three days that it had an opportunity to cut and roll back over, getting rejected off the five-day moving average twice, you at least like the fact that it closed above and reclaimed it. Uh, Alibaba, again, up and down, up and down based on Chinese news. Again, breaking out, really, really strong name. Uh, Apple, again, you know, say what you want about um, you know, say what you want about the CEO and innovation or the lack thereof. I mean, look at the stock. I mean, just an absolute gorgeous stock. Uh, Google is finally, finally woke up. I mean, it took two, three months uh, for really this thing to get into gear. Um, you know, it's starting to look very good as well. And again, little by little, you know, little by little, you got Facebook, which is a very, very unpredictable, not a great trader. But again, you can still see none of these stocks out of the woods. But at least from the macro point of view, at least they held levels. And even a stock like Facebook that attempted to break out several times over the last several weeks, again, you can see despite the weakness, the really technical potential technical damage that we saw um, in the macro universe this week, it still put in four days of consecutive higher lows, right? Low, higher, low, higher, low, higher. Low. So you have to like 
what we're seeing in the market. And the most important part, and this is where we talk about that technical analysis it is, is not an area for discussion. OK, it, it, it's not, you know, you're not, you're not having you know, it's not a fight with another person. You're either identifying a macro green or macro red. And what I meant by this, we were talking about for three, four days in a row, how the queues just could not reclaim this 203, 50, 204 level. Right. Again, again, there's no room for interpretation. Either, either we're going to reclaim this area or not. And you see the whole week kept on failing, 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 failing. And Friday finally came out. Jobs numbers came out. It was all good in the world. Everybody's rich. And the most important part for the queues going into uh, this week, and this is where, uh, again, channels for the good part could really expand. That's something we didn't see last week uh, because, again, the queues finally reclaimed uh, above the 204 level. And now if you look at the daily view, you have your kind of at least initial magnet to this uh, 206 level, which is right here. So, again, going into uh, this week, you have two things uh, that are definitely going in your favor. Okay, uh, you have a macro seasonal. Okay, macro seasonal traditional strong bias, which is a check mark. That's good. We closed above the 204 level in the queues. That's good because now you're going to have potential of channels really, really expanding. So, like last week, for example, I was just looking for you know quick scalps, and if the runner turned into uh, if the runner turned into anything more, right, anything more than a dollar, then that's great. Like Netflix, for example, on Thursday, I was covering, you know, was covering some short down a dollar, and then I left the runner, and it went down like three. So, again, the, the, the landscape has changed this week. We're talking about now anything that busts out of a macro channel, trying to give them a longer leash, okay, just because of everything we just talked about, uh, and we can have some potential uh, multiple day. Uh, runners in those names. So uh, Friday, um, I traded briefly in the morning. Then I met uh, some friends. Um, I met some friends uh, in the in the afternoon that I haven't seen in years. So I really didn't trade uh, in the afternoon. Uh, it was one. It was a nice trade on Nvidia. Really quick, really quick Nvidia. But but again, we knew this area here. This it reclaimed. It reclaimed supply. And again, if you look, this is kind of almost like the mirror image we discussed. Uh, on the queues and it just reclaimed the stuff and went right into supply. Very, very quick trade. Uh, ULTA, um, ULTA, we talked about this. Uh, actually, hold on, let me show you guys instead of me trying to remember everything we did. But uh, moral of the story, I, I thought Friday's session, um, I thought Friday's session was a little odd, especially in the morning. Um, yeah, a little odd, especially in the morning. Uh, just because, uh, just because how strong the indexes were. Uh, this is a couple of days ago. Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Yeah. So here was here was Friday's session. Uh, here was Friday's session. That um, again, what I didn't like about Friday's session. There was a big good macro rally, and it took because of all these beta names were in such very very tight channels. Um, I thought their aggression of buying pressure could have been better. They actually woke up a little later towards the end of the day. But here's here are the pivots. Uh, Tesla, 338 daily supply needs to build. So we got long Tesla. This is one of the names I talked. I also took as well. So I got long Tesla. And the problem with Tesla was it just couldn't get out of this channel. Okay, so it went up like like 67 cents, 60, 70 cents. And I noticed it just couldn't get out of this channel. Just couldn't confirm the top of the range. I gave it every opportunity I can. And the most important part is when, when you when you're in a pivot, okay, when you're in an aggressive pivot, and you know it's supposed to confirm, okay, and it doesn't, you only have two three minutes to really, you know, make that choice. So I got out of it. I think the level was like twelve thirteen, like literally nothing. Twelve thirteen cents slippage on the stock, and the stock actually imploded like three four points after that. So it's very very important. Again, we're not praying. We're watching the order flow after the confirmation to see if buyers finally cleaned up the seller. So it was actually a very, it was actually a very, very important trade of the day. Again, sometimes it's the money that you save, not the money you make, that's giving giving value to your account. Um, KOD, I wasn't even watching this thing. KOD uh, needs a strong build to wake up. Let me just take a look at what he even did. Let me just see if he even triggers KOD. Uh, no, never busted out of this channel. Nope, still there. It's never busted out of this channel. I still actually, I actually still kind of like it. If you look at KOD, if it could just put in a new range here, about like 68, 69, I think it could probably wake up. So uh, didn't do anything there. 
Uh, Alibaba triggered right at the close because that's basically where I still like Alibaba. I think it goes higher. Yeah, so here's a trade I took on, on NVIDIA. Uh, quick trade, very, very quick trade. It was the first trade of the day. Uh, NVIDIA 212 needs to build. Uh, again, pretty quick scalp. Uh, oops, pretty quick aggressive scalp to start the day. Here's the 312 supply. It broke it, you know, spiked up pretty aggressively. When it was actually as high as the 1349, that's our, where I, I need to see it reclaim uh, this week. So nice little trade there on uh, NVIDIA. TTD went pretty fast. Um, TTD went pretty fast here. Uh, we talked about that 225, uh, 2, the 255.50 area. Again, not a big move. It went right to supply and got rejected. Again, this is the whole purpose of understanding why these lines are important, right? It tells you exactly where a stock should stop, and it will stop there 90% of the time, at least initially. Uh, again, put up like a three and a half, four dollar move, but again, it just didn't reclaim the 260. If you got that, congratulations, I didn't trade that. Uh, Facebook, 201.30, 201.40 needs to build. Again, not the biggest moves, right? Not the biggest moves. It took out 203.40. You can see how it just couldn't get above supply at 201.60. Again, this is where these beta names have to reclaim this week um, versus the action that we're potentially going to see. So they're going to have to catch up to some uh, indexes. Uh, ULTA was a big move. There wasn't even a downtick on this thing. Uh, ULTA 259. Again, here's a sneaky area, 259. That we talked about uh, 259, 259. Once it reclaimed 259, uh, not only did it go, it took out the after hours high of 263 and went all the way to 270. So big move. And a lot of you guys uh, caught that ULTA as well. Um, shop, nah, nothing really going on. Shop. Um, when, when the stock was up four dollars, I said green to red. It went down a few bucks, but it snapped right back. Nothing, nothing doing there. Uh, Apple commercial, ULTA, Nvidia, nice move, blah 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 blah. Uh, Berry, I still like, never got there. I still like that for this week. Uh, Amazon again, it, it, it held perfectly at 1740 and reversed. Uh, so that's a very, very good sign for uh, for Amazon um, going into this week. But again, it has to keep on holding that 1740. If it doesn't, it will go lower. Uh, I think that's it. And obviously, 302.50 Netflix never got there as well. So again, I, I didn't trade the second half of the day. Um, I, I got to really catch up with some friends. And again, it's, it's it really is the little things in life. And I said this. Uh, I said this in the webinar, the, the, the guys that I was meeting, um, I haven't seen them. I'm, I'm talking about in years, uh, six, seven years. And before that, I didn't see them probably about 15 years or so. And it's just amazing some of the little things in life that you really cherish after um, that you could not see somebody that was you know close to you and you know not have a single conversation in years and you and you see them and like nothing has changed. It's like you you were all kids again. And that's a it's, that's a really, really cool part about life that uh, most people just don't really cherish. And I think that was, um, you know, it's the little things in life that you have to remember. It's the memories you keep that kind of gets you going. So it's pretty cool. So uh, going into this week, again, you have to be bullish. Uh, you really have to be bullish um, until the market gives you a reason not to be. Again, the fact that they... Uh, the fact that the market really engulfed, especially on the, on the economic numbers on Friday, uh, the rest of the week of selling was pretty cool. Okay, and the scoreboard being flat meant uh, absolutely nothing. It was more important that we kind of set up for this week. Um, so let me give you guys some ideas uh, going into uh, this week that I like. <sighs> Ready for this? I like Goldman Sachs. I like Goldman Sachs. I like Goldman Sachs. Right? I like Goldman Sachs. Like this could be. Uh, this could be a multiple day runner, right? This could be a really, really big multiple day runner. It, it got rejected uh, right at the top of supply here, right? Top of the supply here. If this thing reclaims uh, 225.50, 225.50, uh, it should go. It should give a multiple day run. Uh, if you look at the weekly chart, just to kind of give you where you could have measured potential, once it reclaims, you could see 229 on the weekly, at least initially. So I like Goldman. I like Goldman Sachs going into this week. Um, let me see what else I want to talk about. Um, it's a lot of beta names. I, I again, there's a reason why I don't put a lot of these beta names because again, I don't want to have artificial f of volume kick in. You know, Uber looks like crap. Um, you know, Uber does look like crap, and you could see it visually how it looks, just like it's about to roll the hell over, right? First close uh, under supply, right? Excuse me, first close under support. 
Uh, if it starts building below, you know, put it this way, I think the biggest gift on, on, on Uber will be if it gaps up, I think you got to short it right into that 60 minute supply. Uh, because if it goes green to red and starts building below 2775, 2780, there's a shot. It goes all down here in multiple day, all the way down to this 2570 area. So that looks like crappy. That looks really, really crappy. Um, I do like this berry. Um, I've been watching this berry for like a week now. It's almost there. I mean, it really, really is almost there. It keeps on getting rejected here. Look at look at the high here, right? The high here is... Uh, 47.72, the high here is 47.73, the high here is 47.95. I, I just think this thing needs to reclaim 48, okay? Uh, again, it's not really a stock. It's, it's, you're not gonna trade it like Tesla, right? You're not gonna trade, it's, it's a stock you have to buy and you have to swing, you have to use the previous day's low as you stop to kind of manage an active swing. Um, but it looks good. Any close over 48 looks really, really good. And, you know, Tesla is really one day away. I thought it was going to go on Friday. It really is one day away. Um, this whole channel here, right? You can see this whole channel here. Once this whole channel gets reclaimed, you can see this 49. And by the way, you can't even call it 39 because this channel is going to dip come Monday, right? You can see it just keeps on going, decreasing, uh, decreasing in slope. Once it reclaims this channel here, I, I think Tesla is going to really, really uh, get aggressive. Uh, I think Morgan Stanley had the high. I think they went to a $500 price target on them on Friday. So I'm actually very, very surprised it didn't go more aggressive on Friday. But again, it's the stock market. Again, you never usually get uh, what you want, but it's very, very important to kind of uh, wait for that level. So um, yeah, I mean, listen, I you know, trading is trading, right? Trading is trading. You're not going to get what you want. You're never going to get it when you want it. But again, as long as you are uh, patient, right? As long as you are patient, you, ha you have an opinion of what's going on in the market. You are uh, open to trading both sides of the tape and you're not fighting price action. You always have a puncher's chance, you right? You always have a puncher's chance of being successful. So guys, have a great, great remainder of your Sunday. I wish everybody lots of love and happiness. Just like I said, just smile. It doesn't cost you any money and you'll be shocked how great life can be. Guys, God bless. And I'll see you all tomorrow. Congratulations for putting in the time to take control of your trading. You're one step closer to owning your future and achieving the success you desire. Want daily trade ideas directly from Dan, straight off his personal watch list? Unlock our free PS60 Vault, where you'll get nightly updates on pivot opportunities we're watching for the next day's session. Click the link in the description to get started today. Thank you.